Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you, everyone who acknowledges me before others, the Son of Man will acknowledge before the angels of God. But whoever denies me before others will be denied before the angels of God. Everyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven, but the one who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven when they take you before synagogues and before rulers and authorities. Do not worry about how or what your defense will be or about what you are to say, for the Holy Spirit will teach you at that moment what you should say. The Gospel of the Lord. If we see everything from the perspective that life ends here, then what sense does martyrdom make? What sense does it make to lose a few years of life and sometimes to bring death forward through the dreadful torture? It makes no sense. But if we truly believe in God, if we believe in the teachings of Jesus, if we believe that there is eternal life, everything takes on a true meaning, another meaning. And that is what Christ refers to today. Whoever declares himself for me before men, I will declare myself before the angels of God. Whoever defends me, I will defend him. Jesus not only says it at that moment, but he does it. Not that he is my favorite saint, but there are others whom I love very much. But I'm referring to Dimas, the good thief. I do not know if he was a good thief. He was probably a murderer. I don't think he is worth imitating as a murderer or thief. But at that moment on the cross, that Good Friday, when his disciples were hidden, when there was only a small group of women and St. John at the foot of the cross, when everyone was full of fear, he was dying, and shortly before he was going to die, he raised his voice to defend Jesus and reproached the other thief. He reproached him that he too was blaspheming against our Lord and confessed at that moment when Christ was dying alone and abandoned, at that moment when Christ was experiencing the abandonment of God. At that moment he confesses what no apostle had yet dared to confess so manifestly and explicitly. And he scolds the other and says to him, Don't you fear God even being in the same torture? He confesses the divinity of Jesus when there was no human reason to believe in that divinity. He would have confessed the divinity when Christ multiplied the loaves and fishes, when he raised Lazarus, or when he cured lepers or paralytics. He could have been impressed by the greatness of the miracle, but at that moment the crucified Christ, from a human point of view, was not the Lord of miracles. He was going to do the great miracle, the resurrection, but for that he had to die. But at that moment he did not look like a powerful Lord, but a weak one. And it is at that moment that Demas confesses him, God, and defends him, and obtains from Jesus the first canonization in history. When he was still alive, Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. 
he defended him. And Christ, who had promised that whoever defended him before men would be defended by him, Christ, he put that promise into practice. At that decisive moment, he defended him, he will be defended. St. Peter says in his letter that the alms cover the multitude of sins. We will have to see exactly what St. Peter meant, but the phrase is there, it is written. I believe that the defense of Christ also, not because you can sin and defend Jesus and that's it, no. He who sins does he who sin does wrong, hurts God, hurts his neighbor, and has to repent. But on the day of judgment, Christ will rise as our great defense lawyer, being him, the judge himself. And he will say, he defended me. He defended me. He did not keep quiet. He was not a coward. He did not put his money, his honor, sometimes not even his family ahead of me. He defended me. He paid dearly. He defended me, and I defend him. I remember another saint who is not very imitable in other aspects of his life. He is a little known saint, a saint of the old ones in the Spanish low countries where the fight for their independence was being fought. He was a Catholic priest. This Catholic priest was a bad priest, a very bad priest. Maybe Graham Greene inspired in this character to write the power and the glory. I don't know. He was a bad priest, a womanizer, alcoholic. And when the Calvinists came to his town, they thought that with him they were going to have an ally to make people become Calvinist, to become Protestant. And they told him to join their ranks. Anyway, you are a bad priest, you are a womanizer, you are doing things wrong, and he answered, Sinner, yes, unfortunately, but not a heretic. He was martyred, and he is canonized. Sinner, yes, unfortunately, but not a heretic. Let us defend Jesus. Let us be saints. Let us defend Jesus. We will need lawyers on the day of our death. We will need defense lawyers. May Christ himself be our lawyer. May the Blessed Virgin be our advocate. May they put in the balance having defended Christ. And may that tip the scales in our favor and may we be eternally with God in the kingdom of heaven. Amen.